What's up everybody? Jeffrey McAvoy here. It's good of you to be back. Uh, I hope that you're all safe and sound in your homes uh, during this worldwide lockdown. It's crazy. It's highly annoying, but uh, the only way, well, you know, whatever. I'll let the, I'll let the WHO take care of communicating, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm here because I have uh, gone past 400 subscribers thanks to you guys, so thank you so much. I'm really ecstatic about it. There are exactly 421 subscribers to my channel at this day. Now, I would like to welcome Super Omen 22, Jamie Linwood, who is busy rebuilding a Moto Guzzi engine. Good luck with that. Uh, Marcin Siwibober, Chirpak One, Tom Lam, Robert Godiecki, Jan H., Henry de Gude, and, um, and many others. And a, a special thanks go to Darren Hold and Rich Lewis, who actively participate on leaving loads of comments and um, on my videos, and I really like that kind of interaction. So this video is about uh, plastic gauge, what it is, what it is used for, and how to use it. So I hope that you enjoy the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace out. The name of this invention kind of gives it away. This is some sort of a gauge, a measuring device or system as it were. It is used wherever a regular feeler gauge blade may not be applied. Typically it is used to measure the clearance of split bearings on an engine among many other fields of application. In this case we will be measuring the clearance in between the bearing caps and camshaft of this Lotus Alain cylinder head that I happen to be working on. This accurate measuring system consists of this rather brittle waxy filament. There are different types depending on what kind of clearance you are measuring. In this case anywhere in between 0.025mm and 0.175mm. So the first step is to cut to length as many strips as there are clearances to be measured. It must be noted that the parts to be measured are to be clean and degreased for best results. One strip should be placed per journal like so. After that, each in turn should be torqued down to spec as if the engine was being rebuilt. It is of utmost importance to note that at this point you should not rotate the part that you are measuring, otherwise it totally ruins your effort to get an accurate measurement. So torque down to spec all split bearing carriers and untighten afterwards. Upon removing the bearing carrier, you will notice that the waxy filament has been squashed in between the bearing and the camshaft. It is totally harmless to the parts being measured, of course. Then comes the actual measuring part. Inside each plastic gauge pouch, you will find a paper ruler with colored squares on it. You need to compare the width of the squashed filament with that of the corresponding square on the paper ruler. And just like that, you have finally measured the clearance in between camshaft journal and camshaft bearing. It's as simple as that. So, in this case, on this bearing, we have 0.063 millimeters. That's 63 thousandths of a millimeter clearance, well within spec. Who would think that you could be so accurate with a strip of waxy filament? I now know for a certainty that these bearings are suitable to these camshafts. In order to remove the remainders of this plastic gauge, I do the following. Just scrape the stuff off with a fingernail and wipe down with an oily rag. And that gets rid of it all, ready for the rebuild. That's it from me for now. Thank you all for watching. Hit me up on Patreon, follow me on Instagram, and I'll be catching you all in the next video. All the best, fellas.